Hello, my name is Farish Kashfina Jad. Please follow me at twitter.com slash Farish Cash and subscribe below for future tutorials. Today will be the basic RSpec tutorial part three, Factory Girl. What is Factory Girl? Factory Girl is a gem that is a replacement for fixtures. It allows you to create templates for reusable objects in your testing. Unlike fixtures, if you need to add or remove fields with your model, you do not have to rewrite the factory. The best term I heard for what is a factory is that it is a smart replacement for fixtures. Factory Girl Methods. We have a build method which returns the model instance and does not save it to the database. We have the create method, which returns a model instance and saves it to the database. This is what I'll be using for the tutorial. We have the attribute for method, which returns a hash of the attributes in the factory, which is good for testing params in the controller. And then we have a build stub post method, similar to the build with some differences. It returns an unsaved instance of the model and assigns a faked active record ID to the model. Please check the notes below for links and references. Okay, welcome to part three of my uh, tutorial series on RSpec. Uh, today we're covering Factory Girl, and we're gonna be continuing on using the code from the previous tutorials as I'm gonna add the Factory Girl Rails gem to our application. So let me get into Vim. We're gonna get into our gem file. Okay, now that I'm in the gem file, we're going to go ahead and add the Factory Girls Rails gem. So let me go ahead and type that in. Save it. Run bundle install. Okay, now that that's installed, we need to get into the Rails helper file and add one specific line to make sure everything works properly. And uh, actually right here, after this we'll add it here, we need to add config, include, factory, girl, syntax methods save that okay a thing about factory girl is you need to put your factory in a factories directory so we need to make that it doesn't make that by default and we need to put that in the spec folder so now we made that next thing we're going to do is make our first actual factory and because this is about post as in a blog uh, we're going to take the then name of that and call it post.rb in our factories folder okay let's go ahead and get into that file and let's start writing our factory and what we want to do is factory girl dot define do and because this is a post we're going to call our first factory post anyways redundant lazy laziness that's also actually efficient and we're going to base this off the previous tutorial where we had a, a title and a body so the first thing we're going to do is set the title and I'm going to do something different from the previous tutorial. I'm going to call this my new title. And I'm going to do the same thing with body. And I'm going to call this my new body. Space that out. Save that. Okay, now we're going to get into the spec file from the previous lesson. Uh, clean up some of the code. Set up the factory and then run our tests like we did previously and show you how the factory actually 
works in that regard. And it was called add posts spec. And let me go ahead and delete some of this. And we're going to set up our factory in a variable. One. And we're going to call post equal create post. That's actually going to set and call our factory to this. And next we're going to visit the post path after we create the post. And now we're going to run our test. Now, as you can see, we have a failure. Expect page to have content, my title. And instead we have my new title and my new body. So that shows the factory is working. Uh, now we're gonna change this and refactor the code to make this work. Now, typically you wanna do this one at a time. Run the test again. And as you can see, it found my title, but it hasn't found my body in here yet. It's found my new body. Let's go back in and change the test again. We're all green, everything's passed, and we've used our first factory. Now that the test passed, I'm gonna show you something a little different. Um, let's say you wanna use different information than what was in the factory. It's quite simple to do. We'll go in here and we wanna change the title to now. My other title. Gonna save that. Run our spec. Okay, as you can see, we have a new error now. And expect the page to have my new title. And instead of my new title, I found my other title in the document. So we kind of overrode what the factory was doing. And because we were over able to overrode what the factory was doing. This gives us the option to play with our test a little bit. Uh, we're not necessarily stuck with what's in the factory. So now that this error is done, let's go ahead and make this test pass. Okay, so we're green again. A uh, couple things I want to point out. One of the other advantages of using a factory over a fixture is if you make changes to your model uh, in a fixture, you may most likely have to rewrite all your fixtures. With a factory, that's not necessarily the case. You can work around that. The other thing is, let's say you wanted to create randomized data for either testing purposes or to see what your website looks like in production with lots of data. Uh, there's a gem that works with Factory Girl called Faker that allows you to randomize the data in the factory. And you can just put uh, the method Faker in front of each line and call it. Uh, I'll probably do that in a future tutorial as an example. But for right now, that's basically it. Uh, we've covered the basics of Factory Girl. For future tutorials, please subscribe to my channel and follow me at twitter.com slash farishcash.